In this video, we'll explore the differences between row-oriented and column-oriented data formats, using Avro and Parquet as examples. A solid grasp of the underlying concepts behind these technologies is key to understanding modern enterprise data architecture, and the role of data streaming and data lakehouses and how they complement each other. Let's dive in. The IT function of a large enterprise can be divided into two areas, operational and analytical planes. Analytics is usually downstream from operations, however there are exceptions to this rule. These two worlds are characterized by very different load profiles, and as a result, the requirements for systems built in these realms are different. The operational plane is where our business processes are reflected, usually in real time, in the applications that support them. If we are running an e-commerce business, this is where our sales transactions get captured and processed. Typical characteristics of the operational plane are Single transaction scope is a single object, maybe a few objects at most. Data structures used are typically small, contained to what's actually being modified. Since often a user is waiting for a response, these systems are usually very latency sensitive, and usually we're working with many concurrent users. So, to put it briefly, a lot of small, latency sensitive concurrent operations. The load profile of the analytical part of our infrastructure is very different. Here we want to derive insights from data that was produced in the operational plane. Usually the data we are interested in will span over a long period of time and will come from a wide array of use cases. In our e-commerce example, we might want to look at data from several months and multiple different sales channels. For example, we might be running three different online stores while also selling on platforms like eBay and Amazon. Aggregating these channels into a unified dataset would provide insights into consumer behavior, enabling better business decisions. The analytical plane is typically characterized by large datasets, both long and wide. Wide means that the data we process is often a join of a few smaller datasets, while long means that we're processing data from a long period of time. Latency is less of a concern, and typically much fewer users are involved, with a notable exception of user-facing analytics that I won't be covering today. Analytical queries often target only a small subset of available columns and rows. For example, you might have a dataset of aggregated sales with 100 columns, but want to find only the product IDs that fulfill certain criteria. Because here we have large datasets and users are often interested in only a small subset of the data, being able to support filtering, both vertically and horizontally, can narrow down the data that needs to be scanned, resulting in massive increase in performance. The result of these characteristics is that batch processing is an extremely popular choice in the analytical plane. As you can see, the load profile in these two areas differs greatly. Because of this, different storage formats are popular in both worlds. To explain how this works exactly, let's take a small dataset as an example. Our dataset has three columns and 12 rows. If we are to represent the dataset in a row-oriented format, we would group these values by rows. The consequence of such approach would be that it would be easy to add a new object to this dataset at the end of this file, Processing of whole objects in sequence is also very natural with this approach. However, if we are interested in a small subset of the data, there is no straightforward way to find it without reading the whole file. This way of organizing your data is well suited for the operational plane, especially for data streaming. The most popular way of serializing your data before publishing to Kafka is Avro, which I will use as an example of a row-oriented serialization format. It's a binary, row-oriented format. This means it's optimized for low write latency and sequential reads. A standalone Avro file typically includes both schema and data, so that the file is self-describing. However, Kafka is agnostic to the serialization format, so if we use Avro with Kafka, the schema is stored in the schema registry, which is a separate application, and a serialized object consists of the binary data and the schema ID that was used to serialize it. Also, Avro supports schema evolution. In the Kafka world, that's managed by schema registry. This means that if your schema is running in production for months and needs to change, and it always does eventually, uh, you have the tools to modify your schema and validate whether the two versions are now compatible. If you don't break compatibility, you can avoid a major version upgrade, which can be pretty complex. Okay, that was Avro, the row-oriented format optimized for the operational plane. Let's consider what would be the consequence of organizing our data in a different way. Instead of writing the whole rows in sequence, we could also group the data by columns. This is what this would look like. So, what would be the consequence of structuring your data that way? First of all, it's now very easy to skip a column. 
In our example we have just three, but if we had 30 columns and only needed two of them, there are massive savings we can make here. Second, you can partition your file and summarize the columns per partition. This way, if we want to filter by some predicate, for example, we're interested only in the negative values, we'll often be able to skip entire fragments of our dataset. I'll explain how Parquet does this in a second. And third, because similar values are grouped together, we can get better compression efficiency than in Avro. The most widely adopted columnar file format is Parquet. It's widely used in the analytical world. It is a columnar file format, but it does partition your dataset into row groups as well. First, your dataset is partitioned horizontally into row groups. Then, each row group is partitioned vertically into column chunks. These are columns that are present in a corresponding row group. These are further divided into pages, but it's not critical to the topic of this video, so I won't get into this today. Each of the row groups is summarized, and the summaries are present in the footer. There you can find information that supports analytical queries, like the range of values per column for each of the row groups. Now that we know how our data is structured in a Parquet file, let's take a look at its characteristics. It's a binary columnar format, widely adopted in the analytical world. It has great support for analytical use cases, skipping whole columns is very efficient, and row chunk summaries allow you to efficiently filter by predicates, often skipping whole row groups during queries. Parquet is extremely efficient at compression for wide datasets. I'll show you some numbers in a later section. However, performance can degrade if instead of a few large files, we have many tiny ones. This is especially relevant when talking about integrating with Kafka, which I'll explain later. I wanted to find an answer to a question whether Avro can be a valid choice for long-term storage. I wanted to see some numbers, comparing the compression efficiency of Avro and Parquet, and I found a very interesting article on that topic. The link is in the description, but the key information here is that two datasets were compressed, a wide one and a narrow one. The result? The difference in compression efficiency of the narrow dataset was present, but it wasn't game-changing. The Avro file was 33% larger than the Parquet file. But for the wide dataset, the difference was massive. 194GB CSV file was compressed to 16.9GB, in the Avro format, but 4.7 in the Parquet format. This means that the Avro file was 3.6 times the size of the Parquet file. Why is that important? When thinking about long-term storage for your historical data, the data size is the primary driver of your costs. On top of that, in the referred benchmark, the whole dataset was serialized at once. When working with Kafka producers, your compression efficiency is highly sensitive to batch size and the difference in compression efficiency between no batching and large batches can be four times the difference in the file size. And increasing batch size usually means increasing latency, which might not be acceptable in your operational applications. This means that if you want to keep your data for long-term storage, Parquet is a clear winner. And this is reflected in how modern enterprises are built. Data streaming platforms usually store the data for a short period of time before it's moved to a more efficient storage. However, if you think about the whole enterprise, many applications don't work with a large volume of data. And the storage cost of the own data is not significant compared to the development cost of applications that own it. In such cases, it might make sense to keep your data in the operational plane for a longer period of time, in order to simplify your architecture which translates to lower development costs. To sum it all up, I'd like to show you how both approaches are often combined. First, your application produces messages to a Kafka cluster in the Avro format. These messages can be immediately read by other applications in the operational plane. A streaming solution like Kafka Connect also consumes this data and copies it to an S3 bucket in the data lake. Then, an ETL process periodically maps and compacts this data into Parquet files for long-term storage. Because columnar formats are not very efficient if you have many small files, you either need to run this ETL process infrequently, which means significant latency, or run it often, but periodically also merge the files. After we have our data in the Parquet format, analytical data products are then built on top of these Parquet files, leveraging its performance benefits for querying. Once it's no longer needed, old Avro data can be periodically deleted from both the Kafka cluster and the S3 bucket after the retention period has passed. This approach allows us to harness the best of both worlds. Ultra low latency in the operational plane, combined with great analytical query performance and efficient compression for long-term storage in the analytical plane. Keep in mind that this is just an example, to illustrate how these formats can work together. This can be designed in many different ways. Most importantly, data lake houses utilize modern table formats like Iceberg or Delta Lake that are built on top of Parquet to facilitate advanced features like time travel or AC transactions. But that's a topic for another video. If you found this breakdown helpful or have questions about Avro, Parquet or any other data format, 
drop a comment below. I'd love to hear from you. If you are interested in more content on data streaming and software architecture, consider subscribing. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.